In this video, we're going to discuss how to do calculations with numbers in scientific notation, specifically focusing on multiplication and division calculations. These definitely tend to be the easier of the two. This is a separate video for doing addition and subtraction. To start us off, let's talk about some quick learning objectives here. The overall goal is to understand and apply the rules for multiplication and division when working with numbers in scientific notation. And the key here is being able to do it without a calculator. Uh, there is a separate video again for working with these numbers with a calculator, but that we'll talk about later. Once we have uh, the ideas down, the next order of business is going to be just having some practice. And at the end of this video, there will be some practice problems with provided answers. Now before we start, let's talk a little bit about the format for scientific notation. In case you haven't watched other videos, in case you're a little rusty, I want to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of terminology. Uh, we can really break a number in scientific notation down into two parts. Uh, that first part being this number out front, which we're going to refer to as the coefficient. Uh, this is where all the useful information is. This is where we keep our significant digits uh, in our value. This is the number that we actually measured. <clears throat> the term out here, this, this 10 to the 14th, uh, is what we'll call the exponential term. These are where we have all of our placeholder zeros. So here's where we keep those placeholder zeros. And again, if you remember the purpose of scientific notation, it's to focus the number on the actual measured component, which we're interested in science, and then get all that uh, placeholder stuff, which we need for math, uh, get it kind of all tucked away to the side so we can focus just on the part that's actually the measured value. With that in mind, we can start now talking about the rules for actually doing calculations. If I wanted to multiply this number here by another number in scientific notation, um, there's some rules we're going to go with that. So really quickly, there's two parts to this. Uh, there's what we do with the coefficient up here. And then there's what we do with the powers of 10 or the exponential term down here. In the coefficient, when you're multiplying numbers in scientific notation, you simply do what the operation implies. If you're multiplying numbers, you're going to multiply those coefficients together. And if you're dividing numbers, you're going to divide those coefficients together. That part's relatively straightforward. Uh, the powers of 10, also relatively simple. Um, keep in mind, when you're dealing with powers that behave differently than numbers, uh, this regular old numbers, we're actually going to add the powers in a multiplication problem and we're going to subtract them in a subtraction problem. That's pretty much as complicated as it gets. The only time you can get yourself into some trouble is right down here. When you get an answer, if we go back to that previous slide, when we get an answer, this front term here has to be between the numbers 1 and less than the number 10. If if in the process of what you're doing, uh, you get an answer that's outside of that range, we're going to need to adjust. We're going to need to adjust our answers so that we actually end up getting a number between 1 and 10. That happens especially commonly uh, with multiplication and division. And we'll make sure we go through an example of that. That all being said, let's try one of those examples. I think this is one of those things that's much easier to see in action than it is just to read some rules. So here's an example of a uh, multiplication problem dealing with numbers in scientific notation. If you recall from before, we had our two rules. Rule number one says that we multiply the coefficients together. And we end up getting 4 times 2, which gets us the answer of 8. Notice the math here is very simple, and that's the way I like to keep these things, because again, you won't have a calculator when you're working on these. So that takes care of our um, coefficient term. Let's talk about the exponent term. Uh, in this case, we have 10 to the 12th. And over here we have 10 to the 8th. If you recall the rule, we simply add those two together. We take the number 12 plus the number 8, and we end up with an answer that's times 10 to the 20th. This answer has a coefficient between 1 and less than 10. Therefore, we are done. This is 8 times 10 to the 20th is our final answer here. If you don't believe it, if it's something that seems mysterious to you, I recommend you take out a calculator right now, put it into your calculator, see if you get answers that match. Let's try a second example. Here we have an example of a division problem. It's the same exact philosophy, but instead of uh, multiplying and adding, now we're going to be dividing and subtracting. So let's actually do that. First, the coefficients. 
Right here, we've got a 3 divided by a 4. Unfortunately, that's not numbers that go evenly into one another. Uh, but you should be able to figure out in your head pretty easily that we get an answer of 0 0.75. So we get 0.75 as our answer here. And this is going to be a problem we'll have to deal with later on down the road. We then go to our powers. Up here we have 106, over here we have 115. Again, we're going to subtract the two of those, and we're going to get an answer that is times 10 to the negative 9. Notice when we did this that we end up with a negative answer, but nothing special happened here. All we did to get that was take 106 minus the number 115, and that got us the negative 9 we're looking for. Now, unfortunately, with this particular problem, we ended up with something we have to deal with now. Our coefficient is not between the answers of, or between the range of 1 and less than 10, so we have to fix that. If we want it to be between 1 and 10, all we can do is multiply and divide by factors of 10. In this case, I think we're going to want to multiply. 7.75 times 10 is going to move the decimal place over one time, and we're going to get the answer of 7.5, and that is in the range we're looking for. However, we can't just take an answer like this and multiply it by 10. We've got to do uh, the opposite on the other side of the number to uh, make sure the value stays the same. If we multiplied by 10 over here, that means on this side, we need to divide by 10. Now, this gets a little tricky again when you're dealing with negative powers. 10 to the negative 9th divided by 10 actually ends up getting us 10 to the negative tenth. Remember, a negative power means you're dividing by 10 nine times. If you divide by 10 one more time, now you're dividing by 10 10 times. And now we get this answer, 7.5 times 10 to the negative tenth. And that is in the proper range. It has the proper exponents. And we are done with this particular calculation. Again, I recommend taking out your calculator at this point, pausing the video, plugging it in your calculator, and just confirming for yourself that this is indeed the answer, and we've done our math properly. To wrap things up, here are some practice problems that you can try. Uh, a bunch of different examples with a bunch of different um, different kind of outcomes, whether you will or will not have to make that adjustment at the end. I recommend pausing the video, maybe spending five or ten minutes trying these. And on the next slide, you will find that there are answers to these problems. Hopefully now you've had a chance to uh, get some answers here. Here they are written in red. Uh, these two steps here in the middle that have the extra step in there are ones that gave you answers outside of the acceptable range for scientific notation, and then there was a conversion done to get back into it uh, over there. And again, all those answers are in red. If you have any questions or concerns with this material, obviously come and see me. Uh, also view my website. There are a couple places where you can get more in-depth tutorials uh, in the link section as well as uh, more practice problems to kind of uh, test yourself on your understanding.